I'm here beside what I think from now on I'm going to refer to as the queen chestnut tree. What I used to call the grandmother chestnut tree. The queen is dead, but long live the queen. Because, as you can see, I'm completely surrounded by her suckers that she has sent up. She has succumbed to the blight. There's no more living growth overhead. But the good news is that she sent up a root sprout right beside her there. And so I'm now clearing away all of the smaller trees and a couple of larger ones that stand between her and the Miracle Sisters chestnut tree, her child, who has been producing so many chestnuts that I have planted throughout the forest. And this new video from last week shows that now there are enough of those babies, those little chestnuts, that the squirrels are starting to lose track of them all. And I found one that came up on the other side of the forest that I did not plant. So I'm going to clear out this whole area between these two trees so that I can plant more chestnut trees between them and take advantage of this perfect condition here in this area. We're on the edge, the upper edge of a small slope that leads from the higher level of the trail here down to the vernal pools. And chestnuts really like to have one foot wet and one foot dry. But they need lots of sun. And so having this area here beside the trail where it's already got a tiny bit of opening, as you may know from another chestnut tree far in the back of the forest that I only found a few years ago that was leaning far over to catch that little bit of light from the trail because she was in the middle of dense overgrowth of large maple trees, which I have now taken down and she's slowly straightening up with my help. But that's another video or two or three. Anyways, so what I'm about to do now with my chainsaw is I'm going to take down this, the tree the grandmother, the queen tree is coming down now. And you may wonder why. That's because she's completely infected with the blight. It took her down. And now she's nothing but a source of that blight. It's airborne. So I have to get rid of her corpse. But I'm going to leave the suckers and I'll explain why after I take her down. There was no need to scramble because I could see that she actually wanted to fall exactly in the right spot anyways. She may have hit one of the small ones that I've planted, but I'll find out later. So now that, now that she's out of the way, I can show you something else. She has been suffering, had, she, well, she's still alive down there. You just have to watch this video to find out what I'm talking about. But you can see, if I move these suckers out of the way, that she put up a sucker a long time ago, right here. And it actually became what they refer to as a pole-sized tree. 
But it died. It died long, long ago. This was already dead when I bought this forest eight years ago. She has been suffering from the blight for over a decade, well over a decade. And so you can see that this is what happens to the suckers if they manage to reach what would be maturity for them. They'll just die from the blight anyways. But the fact that she withstood the blight for well over a decade and kept producing until last year she almost did. She produced a few flowers last year and then that branch just completely died before they could even be pollinated. But the fact that she hung on for so long, it's a testimonial to the fact that there's something special happening here. And you know what it is? It's this right here. It's this red oak. She was holding hands here with that red oak. In fact, you can clearly see that she has a main root here, and so does he. And they're coming right at each other. But they're too far apart, and she probably already had a serious case of the blight before he could help her. That's the beauty of the Miracle Sisters. That's for another video that I haven't made yet. Maybe my next one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave whatever ones are standing here. This is actually a good candidate for a replacement tree, but it's absolutely unnecessary because right here is the root sprout that she sent up here. And this is the best choice because it's connected to her root system because it's part of it, obviously. And that root system is connected to that red oak, as I just said, providing extra strength against the blight. But even though it's connected to that root system, it's an independent tree. And so it's going to be making its own, it already is, making its own root system as well. And it's not preloaded with the blight. Anything that comes out of her carcass, if you will, already has the blight in it. In fact, I'll show you with a close up here that you can see the blight already on this one right here. It's not even as thick as my thumb and it already has the blight. It's visible. And so you may ask yourself, why do I want to save these suckers then if they're only going to succumb to the blight? There's a simple reason, and that is because this and this are one. And so by leaving some of these suckers and not letting them grow tall, I'm just going to keep pruning the tops off of them as long as they survive. Well, I'm going to do two things by doing that. One is I'm going to be sending energy of the photosynthesis done by these leaves to this tree. You see, because it's one system. This is part of this. It, it actually is, right? It's, it's a sprout that grew out of a root of this tree. And so it's all the same tree. So if these leaves are gathering sunlight, they're going to be sending energy to that. And as long as this is connected to a living root system, such as the red oak, of which it's holding hands, with which it's holding hands. And now this whole new tree that's coming out of its existing root system. By keeping these suckers alive, I'm helping to keep this alive so that it's going to, it's all just part of it. It's symbiosis. 
everything helping each other. Imagine if humanity worked that way. So, I'm going to trim the tops off of all of these suckers and then I'm going to get busy cutting up the grandmother's remains, the queen's remains for firewood. And I will give thanks for everything that she continues to do. Isn't nature... There's no word for it. It's beyond beautiful. It's everything. Nature is everything. 